Thank you, Ellen, and good evening. Boy, uh, what an exciting evening to be surrounded by these young folks. I can recall a little more than a year ago when I got the phone call asking me to consider the interim presidency of Marshall. A dear friend of mine and of many of, in this room who's now also gone from us, Mike Perry, said, you know, uh, Gary, you have to do this. Spending a, spending a year around young folks and the fascinating things that they accomplish on a yearly basis is uh, something that will last you a lifetime. And, and it was great advice, and he was, he was certainly right, and, and tonight's yet another example. Many of us in this room um, had the privilege of knowing and working with Lou McManus. Lou was a wonderful person who dedicated his entire life to service to West Virginia. Lou would be characterized as a person who was always helping others, a person who was not afraid of hard work. He was a responsible citizen, and more importantly tonight, he built, worked his entire career to build a better future for the youth of West Virginia. We've heard tonight about the mission in fact, the mission statement of YLA has been quoted tonight. And as I read that mission statement and thought about the Lou McManus uh, Award that we're here to celebrate and I have the privilege of presenting, I thought about how I might compare that to tonight's recipients. We are truly, as citizens of West Virginia, very privileged to have Governor Earl Ray Tomlin and First Lady Joanne Tomlin as the leaders of the state of West Virginia, representing us nationally and internationally. And I have the privilege of having known both the governor and First Lady for many years. And if you think about the governor's career, he came to the legislature immediately upon graduation of the university. And from that point forward, he moved very rapidly from one very responsible position to another, having served as Senate finance chairman, having served as president of the Senate, and now serving us as our governor. And when you think about that, it's readily apparent that he has spent his entire professional life in service to the state of West Virginia. There aren't many, very many people that can say that, but we can certainly say that about our governor. We can also say that during his tenure in the various offices that he has held, he has been not a champion, but the champion of responsible government, physically responsible government. We would be having an even more difficult conversation today about the budget situation in the state of West Virginia had it not been for his leadership. The First Lady, we are the beneficiaries of the fact that the First Lady is a West Virginian by choice. She adopted us, and of course we've adopted her. She came to West Virginia from New York as a journalist and found her way to the Capitol in some way, in, in some fashion, or by some strange coincidence, found her way into the heart of our governor. They met at the legislature, and she has had an equally impressive career of service to West Virginia and particularly to our loved southern West Virginia that, that we care so much about. And in fact, since 1999, or from 1999, until her retirement, it's 2015, she served as president of Southern West Virginia Community and Technical College, a college that was ranked recently as 14th in the nation. That's a tremendous accomplishment. In 2015, she made a very 
important career decision, and that was to retire as president of Southern and serve the remainder of the governor's term as our full-time first lady, and for that, we should all be very, very grateful. I could, I could go on for a long period of time, but I think enough has been said. I think everyone in this room knows and appreciates what our governor and first lady has done for West Virginia and what they mean to West Virginia. And it's my distinct pleasure to provide and, and confer the award, the service award of YLA to Governor Earl Ray Tomlin and First Lady Joanne Tomlin. Notice how she orders me around. It's good to have her in the house most of the time. But uh, we, uh, first of all, uh, Gary, thank you uh, very much for those very kind words. I'm uh, obviously uh, very grateful that you have selected uh, Joanne and I this evening to, to receive this award and to be able to join the long list of distinguished West Virginians who have received this award before us. And uh, <clears throat> you know, when I, I, I think about it, you know, about the, the career that, that I've had here and, and over the years, I, I look at our students and, and you know, just uh, look at them as our future. Very bright. I think I've talked to most of them this evening, but uh, they're our leaders of tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I can't thank the uh, YLA and their board and supporters, their, their sponsors, enough for, for supporting this program and doing what you're doing and working with these young people. They are our future of West Virginia. And it's so important that uh, we were able to, to help them, to encourage them to do the best they can be. Because one of these days, there's a very good chance that one of them may be standing at this podium, living in this house, running this state. So, but anyhow, I, I, you know, I look at them and I wasn't that much older than them when I was a senior at WVU and uh, going into my senior year and, and decided uh, well, I hadn't made any decisions because I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> I graduated with a business degree, and, uh, you know, I felt I was qualified to run General Motors Corporation. But <laughs> when I got to thinking about going back to Chapmanville, there's not a whole lot of openings for General Motors Corporation CEOs. <laughs> so it was about Christmas time I decided that I would like to uh, perhaps get in politics. Uh, see, one of my former teacher, Ramey Barker, who taught me uh, government at Chapmanville High School, yeah, you know, we we uh, he he got us very interested in politics and reading the newspaper and knowing what was going on not only in our county but our state but around the country and around the world and and you know that kind of set my mind and a lot of my classmates to thinking about what I would like to do or where I would like to be one of these days and you know and, and I think that's very important that you that our young people have those discussions and think outside the box, think of the things that you can do. And because, you know, the, the possibilities of West Virginia for you are great, you know, it, and, uh, but I think sometimes it takes a little bit of encouragement. Maybe some of that encouragement that our students don't get at home. But I think it's up to all of us to, to, to work with our students, <coughs> excuse me, wherever we can and to encourage them to do the right things. But I'll speed up the story a little bit. I know everybody's tired of standing. But I was elected as a, uh, uh, to, uh, we walked in in 1975 as a freshman member of the, uh, believe it or not, for those of you around here, it was the 62nd legislature bill, Rainey, you would know that, some 42 years ago. But I was somewhat of a novelty, a 22-year-old that was running around there and not really knowing, you know, the whole process. I knew I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to make West Virginia better. And who was Speaker of the House at the time? Lewis M. McManus. And I remember I was just so in awe of this man that he was up there running that 100-member body of the House of Delegates, the lower house, or sometimes when I got to Senate, we called them the House of Commons, but that's another story. <laughs> <clears throat> 
But I remember the, the interest that, that Lou took in me and you know, was able to sit with me after the session was over, sometimes in, in, in his office, and tell me about the process and how it worked, how the legislature worked. And I thought, you know, this is pretty neat that I've got you know, the number three man in line of power in West Virginia that's sitting here taking his time with me, you know, and, and tell me, you know, uh, how the process works and what I should do, what I should do. And that really stuck with me. And, you know, the other thing that I'd always been involved with was, was with service to other people. And I think, you know, that's a, a, what we all in West Virginia, we're, we're good people, we want to do that. But sometimes you've got to take that extra step to go out and help a neighbor, to go out and do something in the community, to go out and be a big brother or big sister, to volunteer because there's a lot of need in West Virginia, and we've got good people, a lot of good people in this room. And I know that you're involved in your communities. By seeing you here tonight, I know you're involved with this organization. But anyhow, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, to, to win or to be awarded, not a win, but be awarded, the Lewis M. McManus Service Award is just something that uh, we'll cherish forever. You know, uh, I think Joanne and I have been so honored in our lives to have a you know, long, happy marriage, have a you know, good son, college graduate who's working every day, getting ready for a big wedding, coming up here very soon. Don't cry. But, uh, <laughs> I am going to cry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, once again, I just want to say thank you all to, for the uh, – for the award, it's fantastic. It's one that I'll always cherish, and uh, thank you for the opportunity for uh, allowing me to serve the people of West Virginia for the last 42 years. And uh, we'll miss it, but we'll be around. We'll still be promoting and pushing and doing what we can do to make West Virginia the best state in the union. Thank you again. As a young girl growing up, I. I had a lot of opportunity where, where I went to school. And our young people here are smart, and we need to give them hope and to know that there are things out there for them in the future here in this state, whether they be entrepreneurs or whatever it is that they're going to do. And I think back to my career in higher education as a president, and especially, as Gary said, in southern West Virginia, young people, many who come from dysfunctional families and don't really know that there's hope or help out there for them. And that's why this, a program like this is so important. And I think back to my first commencement um, at, at Southern, and the young lady who was the student government president got up and said, you know, I've spent my whole life, and I've, I've come from a very dysfunctional family and lived from here to there, and they always told me I could never be anything. I couldn't be anything. And I came here, and I was given opportunity, and I was in the community, and I was shown what service is, and I was shown all these things, and today I'm a nurse. So I say every student can have that opportunity, and with programs like this, it's so important. We are certainly honored to receive this award. It is probably the best honor we're going to have as we leave the governor's mansion this year because we care so much about the future of the state and the youth here in our state. So I accept this and we accept this on behalf of all of you and on behalf of all the people that are here. And we appreciate it so much and thank you very much. Thank you both. Again, thank you also for your wonderful hospitality and uh, year after year. So uh, please join me in thanking them so much.